uh, is organized by CALIC. The CALIC is the Consortium of Academic and Research Libraries in Ghana, in collaboration with IFO. And I, we are on the IFO platform. And I'm, the, I'm the country coordinator for Ghana. So we are organizing this. And this morning, we have a presenter here that we normally have. And is a very seasoned presenter. She's Irina Kushma. She's the, she's the uh, program manager for Open Access from IFO, IFO Open Access Program Manager. And this morning, she's here to just take us through understanding and applying Creative Commons licenses in teaching and learning. Ladies and gentlemen, you all, uh, let's all welcome. And in order not to waste much time, we just want to say, Irina, you're welcome. Kindly take us through. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot for the invitation and uh, happy to see you all joining today. So just a reminder that if you have questions, uh, it would be easier for us if you could put them in a Q&A because then it would be easier to track. Um, and if you have any comments uh, or thoughts, please use uh, a chat. But now I'm sharing my screen, so it's not possible for me to read any chat messages. So I'll only do that when, when I finish. Uh, so welcome to this webinar about Creative Commons licenses. Uh, and uh, I would like to start uh, with an observation that uh, in physical world, it was uh, a lot easier to share creative uh, products. And uh, with digital world, you would think that uh, there are no limitations uh, in terms of distances, or you don't really need to send out a physical object to someone with whom you'd like to share it. And uh, in digital world, it uh, should have been easier to, set, to share creative products, uh, but unfortunately, um, it's not because uh, even if uh, it's possible to actually transmit a product or uh, creative product, uh, it's still not much you, a receiver could actually do with that because uh, unfortunately there is common misunderstanding that most of the things which are online are available free and openly. Unfortunately not. If it's not specifically mentioned that uh, those creative works are available openly, they are not. And um, there is not much you can do with them. Uh, so they are locked uh, uh, by copyright permissions. And um, Creative Commons licenses are uh, a part of copyright, but they really make it easier to reuse the works that are meant to be shared. And um, every user or user doesn't need to ask for a permission from a copyright holder because that permission is already automatically granted. And uh, like I said, Creative Commons licenses are make copyright a little bit more flexible. So they go from all rights reserved to some rights reserved. And those some rights are always specified in the licenses. And you can see, you, you can think about Creative Commons licenses as uh, ice cream with many flavors. Creative Commons developed uh, a widget which uh, makes it easier to decide what kind of license uh, to use if you want to encourage sharing of your research work. And uh, basically when an author makes a decision or creator makes a decision uh, which license to apply, then there are two things to consider. So the first one is whether adaptations uh, of the work will be allowed uh, when it will be shared uh, and whether commercial use of the work will be allowed. So most of the restrictions around uh, Creative Commons licenses are uh, on uh, whether it's possible to make adaptations and whether commercial use is allowed. 
Creative Commons licenses uh, include uh, four elements. So it's, it's always required to acknowledge an author. So attribution is always mandatory. So you can't use, uh, for example, I licensed my presentation with uh, Creative Commons attribution license. And if you want to reuse it, you should always mention me as the person who created original version. Then there is this non-commercial aspect that will address uh, modifications and adaptations. And then how a modified work will be shared. So attribution, like I said, uh, is a mandatory attribute of all Creative Commons licenses. And uh, whoever reuses uh, a work which is licensed uh, with Creative Commons attribution license should always acknowledge uh, a creator. And then uh, if uh, this most uh, liberal version of, li of uh, Creative Commons license uh, attribution is used, then uh, adaptations are allowed as well and uh, commercial use is allowed. So there are no restrictions on the actual use. And the Creative Commons attribution is uh, called the free culture license because it's the most open um, out of all of them. Um, in uh, COVID-19 pandemic, um, European Commission, which is uh, a major fund of research in Europe, uh, introduced uh, recommendations uh, to projects that uh, support COVID-19 related research. And um, a recommendation is that uh, all research publications relevant to the outbreak should be immediately available uh, via repositories uh, at the latest at the time of publication in a journal. And uh, Creative Commons attribution license is specifically mentioned. And for zero just stands for the latest version uh, of the license, and it's uh, it's only international version, so it's also good to use the latest one. Uh, there were four editions of Creative Commons licenses. Uh, previous three had to be ported to national legislation, and this zero four uh, is an international one. So in case you you're wondering why it's CC zero. Uh, why it's for zero, sorry. And then there are similar recommendations to data, because uh, data as such are not copyrightable, but uh, in some cases, if data are recordings or if some uh, intellectual work is put into assembling the data, then um, that data collection could be uh, copyrighted. And the recommendation again from the European Commission is uh, to license open data under Creative Commons attribution or Creative Commons public domain dedication, which means that uh, there is no copyright on data. So it's the first time when uh, Creative Commons licenses are mentioned in uh, funder policies uh, in Europe related to depositing in uh, repositories or making data available in repositories because before there were requirements to or recommendations to publish in open access journals under open licenses but uh, it was never extended to repositories so with COVID-19 uh, it's a first step and I think it's actually a good practice that uh, should remain even after COVID and I'll talk about it a little bit later. Uh, if we check open access journals in the directory of open access journals. And if we check by license, so nowadays, uh, director of open access journals indexes uh, 15,544 journals. And uh, the most uh, commonly used license is this one, Creative Commons Attribution. So as you can see, 6,338 uh, um, journals use this kind of license. Um, there was a very useful guide produced uh, in October uh, 
guide to Creative Commons for scholarly publications and educational resources. Uh, and uh, here is a link and I'll, I'll also show some parts um, from this guide. And uh, uh, it, it stresses that Creative Commons attribution license is uh, encouraged by uh, all open access proponents because it's it's really fully aligned with the Budapest Open Access Initiative because it, it allows everyone to read and, and reuse research results. Uh, and uh, if uh, your work is licensed uh, under CC BY license, then uh, everyone can distribute full text of a publication freely, copy a text for indexing and text mining for commercial and non-commercial purposes, uh, include the full text uh, in a repository, for example, institutional repository, combine parts and create a collection. Uh, for example, a handbook, a textbook could be created, um, translated into another language. Uh, tables and charts could be modified without uh, prior without asking for specific permission from a copyright holder. So the CC BY license is the most uh, open access friendly license. And of course, when we talk about uh, licensing uh, books under, for example, CC BY license, then uh, questions arise, if everyone can use it freely, does it mean that uh, there is no way to receive remuneration and compensation. So this guide specifically mentions that uh, even if a PDF of a book is made freely available, the license doesn't prohibit to sell printed books and uh, commercial use is allowed. And um, there were worries um, that uh, if PDFs are available, would people still buy printed books? Um, and uh, those worries were not too much grounded because uh, as experience shows, uh, people still prefer to buy print on demand, for example, copies. Uh, so there is not much conflict between um, open digital availability and also possibility to sell printed copies. And uh, it's still possible to, um, to get royalties from a publisher from um, selling print books. Second type of license that I would like to explain is uh, a non-commercial one. And um, as it says, only non-commercial use is allowed. And uh, if someone uh, wants to use your work commercially, then uh, specific agreement should happen between you as an author and uh, that person or institution that would like to reuse a publisher, for example, and then uh, conditions of uh, commercial use uh, should be negotiated by you with a publisher. So if we go back to this license chooser, then non-commercial Creative Commons non-commercial license allows uh, adaptations, but it doesn't allow commercial use of the work. And this is how this license would look like. So it's called attribution because attribution is mandatory and then non-commercial. And uh, uh, non-commercial uh, restrictions for scholarly work is really um, discouraged by um, funders uh, and uh, by um, publishers and open access advocates, because sometimes it's really hard to define what is meant by uh, non-commercial use. Uh, so it creates more complications because non-commercial is really open to interpretations. And for example, uh, if uh, my presentation is licensed uh, under CC BY non-commercial, and if you want to reuse it uh, at your course or school, and in case you charge 
participation fee for that course, then uh, it's not allowed. So it limits that, sir. And also, it's also not possible to, to index and text and data mine that research work. And that's one of the major reasons why uh, non-commercial licenses are not good for scholarly outputs, because um, text and data mining is not possible. And then uh, this work can't be reproduced in uh, magazine, newspapers, websites, and part of the works uh, can't be reused for some marketing purposes. So there are really a lot of limitations uh, with this non-commercial license. A third license is called no derivatives. And uh, here we talk about uh, adaptations. So for example, uh, if uh, someone takes my, uh, my work and uh, modifies it, uh, it's not possible if I license uh, my work under no derivatives. Uh, so with this license chooser, uh, adaptations uh, are not allowed if um, no derivative no derivatives license is used for an original work, but commercial use is allowed. So this is how no derivatives license look like, uh, still mandatory attribution, and then uh, it prohibits making any adaptations. Uh, so if uh, no derivatives license is used, then it's not possible to modify images, even change colors. It's not possible to edit and reproduce a text. Uh, it's not possible to customize content in uh, any way here. It's not possible to translate uh, or reuse for open educational resources. Uh, all, all these uses listed here should be specifically agreed upon with, with an author if uh, the work is licensed under no derivatives license. So that's why it's, it's also not very useful uh, for those who promote uh, open access and open education. And then this share alike license uh, condition uh, is to me the most complicated one because basically what it says, if I licensed my presentation uh, on the CC BY, if you want to take it, modify it, uh, and uh, share. You can only share it under the same license as my original presentation was shared. So if it's CC BY, you can only license your work with CC BY as well. So then uh, adaptations are allowed, but uh, others should share adaptations uh, under the same conditions as uh, the original work, and then commercial use is allowed. So this is how this license looks like. And uh, this is a license that is used by Wikipedia. And one of the arguments for Wikipedia movement is that uh, uh, if I allow commercial use and someone reuses and prohibits that commercial use uh, in a work that is shared, then it might be limiting because it, it limits free culture movements. So, so I, I understand this argument, but uh, I think it's, it's a bit too complicated. And um, for example, in my practices, I try to avoid this share-like license because it really makes it complicated. So you can see um, six types of licenses are listed here. We already discussed attribution, share-like, non-commercial, no derivatives. And then there are two more licenses which uh, combine conditions. So there is a license which uh, allows non-commercial use and uh, share alike, or non-commercial and no derivatives. Uh, so just once again, minimum requirement and uh, the most open license is Creative Commons Attribution, CC BY. Then uh, share alike, non-commercial, uh, no derivatives, uh, and non-commercial share alike and non-commercial no derivatives. Six licenses, uh, four conditions combined uh, in that way. Four symbols for possible conditions, six licenses. 
Creative Commons licenses are also machine readable, and that's why um, everyone who supports open access really loves them because they they um, they were designed for digital works, so they they work well for digital works, and um, they include this human readable layer, those symbols which I mentioned, which are, are clear to people uh, who would like to reuse use or reuse CC licensed works. Uh, it's also a contract, so it's a document uh, that um, you can take to court and uh, defend your rights in case uh, uh, someone um, used your works uh, not according to the conditions you specified. And there were already a number of uh, court cases uh, in North America and in Europe. Uh, so mainly between uh, newspapers uh, who used uh, non-commercial uh, license books uh, uh, without uh, getting permission from authors. Um, so the Creative Commons licenses have been proven in courts. And um, they also include this digital code that is clear to harvesters, to machines, uh, uh, when they access uh, works in the repositories, uh, and if they see Creative Commons licenses, uh, those robots or harvesters or other software tools understand uh, what could be done with that work. So it's human readable, lawyer readable, and machine readable, which is really good. I looked at uh, Ghanaian journals uh, in DOJ, and um, there are six of them um, now, and uh, four of them are licensed under CC BY, and then one is CC BY non commercial share alike, and uh, one uses uh, a publisher license not Creative Commons license. So, so for example, this is Ghana Medical Journal and uh, in open access license notice, it says that uh, it applies uh, Creative Commons attribution license. Uh, and uh, by submitting a paper for publication in Ghana Medical Journal and also agrees to have CC BY license applied to their work and then uh, others are allowed to distribute, remix, tweak, and build upon this work, even commercially, as long as they credit uh, an author uh, for the original creation. And this facilitates freedom in reuse and ensures that Ghana Medical Journal content can be mined without, without barriers for the need of research. And uh, especially when we're all trying to find cure and vaccine for COVID-19, this mining is really important. Uh, there is also a notice to authors uh, in Ghana Medical Journal. It says that uh, authors will retain copyright and articles submitted to this journal uh, uh, will be published uh, under CC BY license. Um, and this is how an article looks like. So it says copyright belongs to authors and this is an open access article under CC BY license. This is how it's embedded in, in the PDF. And I already mentioned uh, this condition that everyone is free to share and adapt uh, under attribution terms. And this is an actual document which explains, so this is a short summary and it's, it's, uh, it's a document that describes CC BY license uh, and uh, a digital code that could be embedded. Uh, uh, when we talk about Creative Commons licenses for open educational resources, um, uh, there is this notion of uh, five R activities uh, related to open educational resources. And these five R's are the right to retain, revise, remix, reuse, and redistribute, uh, which means that uh, if uh, we want to follow this five R conditions, that uh, that means that uh, Creative Commons no derivative license falls out uh, of the scope because it prohibits uh, reuse, revise, remix, uh, uh, 
I mean, it allows reuse, but only for non-commercial purposes, but it, it uh, prohibits uh, revise and remix parts. So Creative Commons, uh, no derivative license are not compatible with uh, open education movements. Uh, so it could be only uh, Creative Commons attribution, share like non-commercial, for example, or a combination, but it can't be uh, no derivatives work. And uh, it's very helpful if um, open educational resources are actually shared sir, under Creative Commons licenses, because then um, it's really easier for other educators to reuse the work because they, they see clear permissions. Um, and um, it's, it's really helpful. So sometimes we mean well and we make our works available, but we we don't specify um, how others could use and reuse. And um, using Creative Commons licenses is a good way to specify that. So, um, Creative Commons recently released um, annual report for 2019, where they counted how many works are now available uh, globally under Creative Commons licenses. And works, I mean, not only research works, uh, all types of creative works. And they estimated nearly 2 billion CC license work, works online. Um, this number is really growing. And uh, Creative Commons maintains uh, the search engine where you can, for example, search for images available for use, and it includes over 500 million images. And here you can specify, for example, I want to, I want something that I can use commercially or, and or modify or adapt. And uh, those images come from uh, World Best Museums, uh, from, um, specific directories for open licensed images uh, and also from all sorts of places. Um, this year, an interesting discussion started by funders, how we can make sure that uh, reuse is really allowed for open access content. And um, they called uh, this new plan or new strategy as uh, rights retention strategy. And um, it's about helping researchers retain their rights and share their work open access. And it was introduced in uh, July this year by uh, Coalition S. And uh, Coalition S is a group of funders that are uh, signed to this vision that open access should be uh, full and immediate, sir. So it should be a full and immediate reality as soon as possible. So it started uh, in September 2018. So you realize we're not at full open access yet, uh, but hopefully we'll be there in a couple of years. And it's supported by uh, a number of uh, national funders. It's also supported by Science Europe, which is an umbrella body for European uh, funders. Uh, and it's also supported by charitable and international funders and research organizations and uh, the European Commission. So it's, uh, it's a growing body of uh, research funders who want to help uh, to make it easier for researchers to share their works via repositories. And uh, uh, what this rights retention strategy says is that uh, if this work was funded by one of the funders, uh, then um, also at least also accepted manuscript should uh, be made available uh, in an open access repository under Creative Commons attribution license with no embargo. And publishers are notified about that, uh, authors are notified about that. Uh, and uh, there is also a call to publishers to extend this policy beyond 
research funded by uh, Coalition S funders. So it really helps to ensure that at least was accepted manuscript, a version of the peer review is immediately available in the repository. So when this strategy is implemented, uh, we wouldn't have embargo periods any longer and we'll have an open availability of an article under Creative Commons license. And um, it's expected that uh, when researchers submit an article, they could inform a publisher saying that uh, this research was funded by a funder who requires it. And then um, a version of also accepted manuscript will be deposited uh, in a repository. Uh, we would like to support this initiative uh, and we're working with uh, Confederation of Open Access Repositories and Spark uh, on a joint campaign how this strategy could be extended to not only research funded by Coalition S members and how we can really help to populate uh, open access uh, repositories with um, current content and avoid embargoes and uh, have clear licenses attached to publications. My last part, uh, just a couple of slides, uh, how you can uh, apply creative Commons licenses uh, to your repositories if you have one, because before we talked about uh, journal articles or other publications or visuals, uh, but here we're talking about repositories. And um, my colleagues produce this useful guide which uh, recommends uh, Creative Commons attribution uh, as uh, the best license for, for the repository, because it's internationally recognized, well-established, both human readable and machine readable. It meets the definition of open access, uh, and it's one of the most compatible licenses for interoperability purposes. So this is how we embed uh, Creative Commons licenses in um, our partner repositories. So it's uh, Merrill, Myanmar Education Research and Learning Portal, where we attach uh, Creative Commons license to every article where copyright allows, of course. And um, this is a policy that we have that um, Creative Commons attribution license is a preferred license for all the content where copyright belongs to researchers or universities. Um, and we also use uh, CC BY for metadata. And um, this uh, information sheet from uh, University College Dublin Library stresses that uh, Uploading uh, articles to research repository doesn't really break copyright uh, because vast majority of journals and publishers allow to do so. Um, and um, like repository staff checks using Sherpa Romeo, Romeo with this new rights retention strategy. Hopefully there will be no need for Sherpa Romeo because there will be no embargoes. Uh, and uh, it also addresses concerns of some of the authors that are articles which are made uh, in repositories, available in repositories. For example, those also accepted manuscripts are not really published versions, but it's they are final versions in, in terms of content um, because content is identical and only layout is different. Um, and uh, what they did at uh, University College Dublin, and maybe that's something that you can do in your institutions if you have repositories, they uh, checked copyright permissions of publishers where researchers from UCD publish, and they created uh, this list uh, what, where researchers publish and what are publishers' permissions. Uh, and they also produce this useful gui guide how to recognize this also accepted version because sometimes you, you don't really know whether whether it's a published version or not. So this is how this uh, version after peer review would look like. So it would be most likely uh, formatted like this without any specific publisher branding or like this or like this uh, if it's 
if it's a camera ready. And even sometimes there might be uh, numbered lines, but uh, if there is any type of publisher branding on that PDF, then it means that it's it's not an awesome accepted manuscript. It's a publisher version and it's subject to permissions from a publisher, which we can check in Sherpa Romeo. And I also hope that with this rights retention strategy, this permissions will be eased out. So, so of course, Majority of publishers were not very happy with uh, this funders move with the rights retention strategy, but I hope they will comply and comply with it. Sir. And when we're talking about uh, also accepted manuscript, we mean a version after peer review, so peer reviewed version. Um, and um, this disamine is uh, another tool which uses Sherpa Romeo, where you can search uh, by an author. In Sherpa Romeo, you only search by a journal name. Here you can search by an author and, for example, find uh, articles and uh, what are archiving permissions, whether preprint or postprint or published version could be archived. Uh, if you upload uh, thesis and dissertations to your repository. Usually you would have a sign up sheet uh, with an author of this thesis and dissertation. And this is an example of sign up sheet for students thesis. Uh, and uh, they include all usual uh, copyright uh, statements, copyright related statements. And then they leave it up to a student to select a license. Uh, and uh, because there are six licenses and not every student uh, is an expert uh, in every license. So maybe uh, it's better if you as an institution just select one license and uh, use it as preferred license. And uh, in case students don't want to, or they give some reasons why, why they don't want to use, for example, CC BY, then maybe they, another license could be applied, but uh, it's not up to a student to really make this final choice. And this is how you embed Creative Commons licenses uh, in uh, repositories uh, that are based on Dublin Core. So you put a license name in DC Rights field, and then in DC Rights URI, you put a link to an article, and this is how it looks, it looks on, on the website as some rights reserved. So thank you very much. Apologies if I was talking too much, but it's, it's a complicated topic. Uh, thank you very much, Irina. I think it was, it was very insightful. You've done quite a lot. Uh, we have some few questions here that maybe you may have to answer. So the first question is, can academic article have a creative common, common zero? If yes, will such an article be considered reliable? This is coming from Kinsley. Thanks a lot, Kinsley. Um, this license inf information isn't really related to reliability issue. If CC0 is used, it means that uh, there is no need to credit an author. So you, you can reuse this article without acknowledging um, an author. But honestly, I haven't seen uh, any examples where copyright would be waived in research articles. So for example, we produced uh, Open Science Training Guide and we decided to use CC0 license for that because we imagined that a lot of people will be using and reusing that guide and uh, there were many authors involved in writing it. So we didn't want to make it complicated for people who would be reusing this guide to man mandating this acknowledgement of dozens of authors who created it. But I think for research articles, uh, you, you would need to acknowledge an author Maybe if you if you can give an example where you, you, you saw an academic article on this as a zero, it would be interesting to see maybe an academic is really against any types of copyright and maybe it's a statement, but that's unusual. Anyway, thank you very much, Irina. There's another question coming from Theodosia. Uh, but before I read this one, I just want to tell you that please, if you have any question, kindly put it in the Q&A and then we can, uh, Irina can answer for you. Then we have a question from Theodosia. He, she says that, what would you say about using CC BY for thesis and presentation in institutional repositories? 
So my, my opinion is that CC BY is the best license for these and dissertations in um, institutional repositories uh, because it, it allows uh, text and data mining um, and uh, it increases the visibility and reuse of this article and that's something that is really useful for early career researchers. Although there were some issues um, one of our partner universities, University of Hong Kong, uh, was using CC BY license for their thesis and dissertations. And then uh, they discovered that uh, there was uh, an unethical publisher in Europe that took, uh, that basically downloaded their theses and started selling them uh, as books without uh, contacting University of Hong Kong or without contacting authors. And uh, they wanted to pre prevent uh, these operations. And then uh, they moved to non-commercial, uh, CC BY non-commercial license for thesis and dissertations. But that was the only case that I heard. And the uh, majority of uh, universities nowadays uh, apply CC BY for thesis and dissertations. Great. Then same person, the Dosa is also asking another question. He said, what happens to institutions that have copyrights to theses and dissertations? Will the institution then determine the license to be used? So maybe I'll make you a presenter to Dosa and, and uh, you can explain. Because um, I, I think um, if, uh, if a thesis belongs to, you know, like if, if a university is a copyright holder, then it's up to a university to decide uh, how this thesis is shared, which license is used. So it's, uh, it's, it's the institution that determine the license. In some countries, like for example, in my country in Ukraine, uh, it's a joint ownership. So it's an author and an institution if it's work for hire, and then it's a collective decision of uh, an author and an institution. And I don't know if that answers your question to Dossier, whether you want to explain the context in which you asked it. Maybe to Dossier, in case you didn't get it well, you can, you can ask the question again and then we see how best she can answer. And, okay, but there's well, another question. Oh, hello? Can I go ahead? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, go you ahead. You know, somehow I, 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 my system tripped, so I didn't hear Irina's response. Okay. But why I'm asking that is for institutions, for University of Ghana, for example, copyright of these and dissertations, I think is the institution. That's what I'm asking. So does the institution then determine the type mm -hmm. of license? Yes. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. Yes, and then you have to include it in the policy. So you have to have okay. a, a statement saying that uh, University of Ghana will apply, for example, CC BY license for all okay. thesis and dissertations, and then all authors are notified. But it's it's up to a copyright holder to decide. Thank Thanks. You. Thank you. There's another question from Bendula. Bendula says, could you show us step uh, step by step, click by click? how to put CC license to somewhere, <laughs> example, video on YouTube or somewhere like that. Well, it, it depends where you want to put it. So for example, when I put CC license on my slides, I just basically copied this icon CC by and I wrote attribution for zero. So it's not really, uh, uh, it's not a machine readable version, but it's uh, it, it's clear to humans who will be reusing. If you upload to repositories, then uh, I showed which metadata fields you need to fill in uh, to uh, embed Creative Commons license in a repository. And I can also share my screen now and, and show you how you can generate uh, a code if you, for example, have a website. And if you want to use uh, this uh, license for for the website. Um, just a second. I'm trying to find my browser. Ah. 
Ah, maybe because, sorry, I need to close my slides. I don't know why. Sorry, I don't know why I'm struggling with <laughs> finding a browser. Yeah, sorry, I found it. <laughs> so I hope you can see it now. So it's Creative Commons license. Um, uh, creativecommons.org website and if you click uh, share your work choose a license that's license chooser that I showed uh, so to select a license it asks me two questions allow adaptations for your work and I say yes allow commercial use of your work I say yes for example but of course you can say no or yes as long as and then if I answer yes to both questions, then uh, it's a piece of code that I can copy and uh, embed in, in the website. Uh, but most of their tools to build website like WordPress, Joomla, and others, they already have Creative Commons licenses embedded in, in their websites. So, but that's, that's probably their, like the, the easiest way how to select a license or copy a code. And then if it's an image, you can just copy copy this image and the statement, the work is licensed. So I hope that answers your question. Great. Uh, um, Irina, maybe I have a question. My question is, what is best? Is it best having the CC license to your repositories? For, for instance, you want to use a CC license for the repository. Is it best to use the CC license for the whole repository or you have to use it for just individual uh, pieces or individual documents that are in the repository? So I think it's best to, to have both. So to, to have um, a license uh, at the footer of the website, but then the license would be that except otherwise uh, noted uh, this website is under CC BY, for example. And then it would be good to also attach the license to every uploaded record because uh, in some cases, we will be uploading publisher PDFs, for example, where publishers uh, allow make, making PDFs available without embargoes or after embargoes. But uh, they, we can't apply open licenses to them because they be, only a copyright holder could apply a license. So in that case, that repository content, content will be copyright protected because copyright belongs to publisher. And then, for example, at the same time in this repository, there so could be thesis and dissertations from students or also accepted manuscripts openly licensed, if that's possible. So I would go for both, if possible. Thank you very much. Um, uh, so, so, uh, Miss, uh, question coming from Kinsley saying that with regard to CC BY, an idea from an author can be remixed in such a way that the original idea can be obscured. How do you handle? this when you cite or when you cited the original author? Well, I think ideally, if, uh, for example, I, I took Richard's article and uh, I uh, messed up with, with his conclusion, so I uh, said something that he didn't meant uh, in my article. And then when I make it available, uh, a reader would uh, really investigate uh, what was my input and what was Richard. So there will, there will always be a way to track what was Richard's original idea. But of course, uh, there might be uh, remixes that people wouldn't like. And when I showed my slides, I showed that there was a beautiful picture with dinosaurs alive and then someone reused and killed all those dinosaurs and that's 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 not an intention i would have if i would be creating this beautiful picture of dinosaurs but uh, that's that's unfortunately a reality that you have because i mean everyone is free to do anything they want with uh, building on ideas 
but it, it could be an additional argument to use no derivative license because then no one can obscure anything. Great. Thank you very much, Irina. I think we don't have any more questions coming up. Um, but I just want to say that um, our, the webinar, the, the recording will be shared after this presentation. So those questions, people who are asking questions on webinar, the recordings, it will be shared. Anyone who registered and is on this platform, you will get the, the link. Um, we welcome our colleagues from the other countries, from Nigeria and other countries who have also joined us. Um, so we are very grateful that you joined. I believe that you are all learning something good. But I'm still waiting in case you have any questions. Please put it on Q&A and then we can move on. And I'll also share my slides with you. So maybe tomorrow because it takes some time to generate a recording link and make it available. And there will be my email. So if you have any specific questions, because I, I couldn't cover a lot of specific details in this short period of time, uh, but please email me and uh, I'll, I'll answer any questions you might have, or we can have a call and, and discuss. Because I think these licenses are important and they were somehow neglected by open access movement by repositories before and now it's really the right time to catch up and make sure that they are used in repositories because that's that's a current good practice and thanks a lot for inviting me we are very grateful that you came so uh, uh, if there are no questions then our next webinar will be coming on soon and it's on research assessment and research evaluation so once you see the call, you can register and then you can join that one too. Uh, you can see that our, these webinars are very interesting and we always you keep learning something new all the time. So I want you not to mix some of these webinars. So waiting for any question, if you have any question. Richard, I have a question. I can't ask it. I can't write it. So can I ask? Okay, talk please. <laughs> I can talk please. Um, Irina, I wanted to find out, would you say that the Creative Commons is a work in progress. Is it still evolving? What would you say? No, I, I think it's it's already by now it's settled. Uh, okay. It's uh, globally recognized, uh, endorsed by publishers, funders. Uh, so I, I don't expect any modifications. There were before with those previous three previous versions of licenses. They were quite different from the current one, but this current one has been standardized uh, a number of years ago and uh, so there won't be any changes uh, so they are really ready to be used as they are this for zero version okay Irina, it looks like going forward the new policies the people who are who are developing their ir policies need to seriously incorporate the ccr FC, uh, the creative commons license in their repository is that correct mm -hmm. Yes, sir. At least at the level of recommended license or mandatory, if possible. But I think licenses should be part of uh, repository policies now. Colleagues, is there any more questions? If in case you can't you can't type your question, you want to mute yourself. You can go ahead. I think it's only Theodosia because we made her a okay, presenter yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and now she can't she, she can't ask a question because she's not a participant any longer, but all others should, should be able to, to type. Yeah. Any more? If not, then we can just say a big thank you to Irina. Anytime we call Irina, she's ready to do a presentation. It is very yeah, amazing. And I want to say a very big thank you on behalf of Kali say a big thank you. Kalik is the Consortium of Academic and Research Libraries in Ghana. And we organize this webinar. Every, we've been organized for, for quite a long time. So almost like every month or every other month we are coming up with something. So next, hopefully next week or two, we'll come up with another one. There's another one coming up on research evaluation, research assessment. And as librarians, we need to be aware of some of these things so that we can help our research institutions and um, universities uh, support them very very well so um i think there's no question i don't know whether you do you know you have final way so that we can no thank you very much carlick for doing these webinars and for inviting me and thanks a lot everyone who joined and uh, hope to continue conversation please email me if you have any questions thanks a lot
Thank you. So we, we had over 120 people registered, but we had 61 coming. I mean, but uh, those who didn't come, we will still send them the slides and then the presentation. So thank you very, very much for coming. And we hope to see you again in the next webinar. Thank God bless you. you. Bye. Have a good day or evening. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye.